Good morning. Welcome everyone to our December Metro Board meeting, our last one of the year. Boy, has it been a year. Um, great to see you all here. We will begin with our roll call. Director Brown. Here. Director Sally. Director Dutra. Director Cullen Terry Johnson. Present. Director Koenig. Here. Director Lynn. Here. Director McPherson. Here. Director Newsom. Present. Director Baker. Here. Here. Director Key Rose Carter. Director Rockham. Here. Ex officio Director Henderson. Here. And ex officio Director Northcutt is unable to attend. Thank you. Um, a few announcements today. We um, are being broadcasted by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. And I believe we have language line services. Is Maria Avila here? Not here yet. Um, maybe. So hopefully she will arrive and we'll have language line services for oral communications and whatever else is needed on the agenda. But I believe Margo has um, an announcement for us as well today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning Director. I, I, I hope you notice we have a full house. All these bright and shining faces are our new trainees. So, but, uh, you all can stand up so we can really get a big picture of the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> This is not all of them. The other class is actually off today, um, but I always go in and introduce myself and talk to them, and I tell them it is so. We're so happy for you guys to be here. Um, we really need you <laughs> first and foremost. Um, but I, and I tell them we'll see them at the other end in eight to nine weeks when they come in in here in their bright and shiny faces in full uniform. So, big thank you to you all and, and welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the Metro family. And if you stay long, um, a little longer for the meeting, you'll see that people here come and people that come stay. Um, when I present the Longevity Awards, you'll see that. So thank you for joining the family and thank you for the work you do. And um, thank you to Margo and the team for your work in getting all these wonderful people to be with the Metro. Great. Okay, any um, board of directors comments this morning? Uh, yeah, I have one. I'm a member of the area agency on the aging, and I can tell you the biggest round of applause and yay, yay, was when we announced that there's going to be some free rides on Metro. That's and great. For the, the aging community, it means a world for them to get to one place to another, and they say, what, we can go free. We're all in. It's, uh, it's a great presentation by Michael Green, who we'll hear about as well. Uh, the, uh, but uh, not a, the, that, but uh, I just want to let you know that the, the elderly community, senior citizens of this county, really appreciate that. It's a great move for us. Great. Thank you. I don't know what else in the meeting I, we would have a chance to say this, but I've been on this board for over 30 years, and this has been the most amazing year out of those 30. We've had good years. We've, we're at one point, we were one of six districts in the country and received special money because of a high level of service for a small community. But it's nothing like what we've done this year. We owe this to Michael Tree, we owe this to our drivers, to our, all of our employees, and I think to one of the best boards we've ever had in terms of people who are committed to public transit and really making this system work. I, I've just been so impressed with what's going on this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your 30 years of service to this organization. Okay. All right. Um, we'll move on to oral and written communication. We did receive some. Um, oh. Oh, yes. oh, wonderful. So our um, language line services are here, and we will have. Um, that available to anyone who should need it. Would you like to make an announcement, Maria? My name is Maria. I'm from Language Line. I'm the Spanish <coughs> interpreter for any services. Uh, my name is Maria. I'm here to provide the service in Spanish. Thank you for being here, Maria. Mm -hmm. um, oral written communications. We um, did receive some additional written communication after the packet was posted. That has been sent to all the board members, and staff will respond. 
um, in a timely manner. So um, I will open up to folks who are here. Hi, uh, Eduardo Montesino. Uh, um, you know, just wanted to give you an update on, on, on recruiting and how we're processing it. As you see, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of trainees were currently running three classes. Um, at a time, we're uh, due to hire um, on January 8th another 20 people and hopefully another 20 people in February. So we're well on our way to um, our reimagined, you know, goals and, and having all the personnel to achieve those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the great work. Anyone else who wishes to um, comment on items that are not on the agenda related to the work of the Metro? Is there anyone on the panel? The number of new, and this is a lot of people. How many new drivers? Margo, do you have that? Okay. It kind of fluctuates, so okay. I do apologize, but it's been between 20 and 25 in the last month. Okay. Uh, because we do have three classes running. Uh, so currently we have three operators going into the line instructor, and then we have three classes running back to back. Uh, so the number does fluctuate. Um, but between 20 and 25, and, and really Eduardo has done an outstanding job in a recruiting. Um, he really has. I see mm -hmm. his signs and billboards everywhere, as I'm sure all of you do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the numbers do fluctuate a little bit. But it, it this is the highest 20 to 25? Correct. Okay, nice. Good job. Yeah. No one online. No one online. Anyone in the world? I'm sorry, the total number is 33. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll move on to item six, which is labor organization communication. Good morning, Board of Directors. Brandon Freeman, General Chairperson, Smart Local 23, representing Veracruz and Fixed Route operators, dispatchers, and supervisors. So you've already been introduced to them all as a group. But before I get started with my other comments, I want to point out that some of these are bus operators, some of these are characters operators, some of these are schedulers, some of these are dispatchers. I want to give them all the opportunity to come up, introduce themselves by name and their position before they sit back down. Come up. Up. One by one. Name and position, please. Hi, family. My name is Moon, and I am a trainee bus operator. And this is my second week of training. And I just want to thank you to the trainers the whole staff hands down these trainers are amazing they are so patient and at the end of the day robert's my trainer and he will say you all did an amazing job even if we you know what <laughs> so um it's family i love everybody and i'm supposed to keep it short i tried a good day and i'm very grateful to be a part of this family Hi, my name is uh, Brian Zamarepa. I'm a trainee bus operator. I just want to thank you guys for letting me impact my com uh, community uh, in a positive way. My name is Karina Guzman, and I'm a trainee bus operator, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Mark Nolpe, and I am a trainee bus operator, and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. My name is Gabriel Locovino, as you know, I'm a training local bus operator, and I'm happy to be here with this new era. But thank you. My name is Ricardo Fernandez, and I'm a training bus operator, and uh, I'm glad that you guys hired me and gave me an opportunity of uh, helping the community. And uh, thank you. My name is Daryl Sessions, and I'm a trainee bus operator, and I'm glad to be here. Good morning. My name is Clifford Gelper. I've been a uh, resident of Santa Cruz County since 1979, and I'm currently a bus operator trainee. Thank you. My name is David Guerrero. I think I'd like to thank you for giving me an opportunity to interact with community. Uh, and be part of this project yeah. because reliable transportation gives them the hope. You know, the average uh, nine to five, and people going to hardship, the grand like to work for grandma, grandpas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Trevor Edwards. I'm a trained bus operator, and um, I'm grateful for the opportunity and the 
Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jose Ramirez. I'm a trainee, a uh, bus operator, and uh, thank you for the chance. I'm Steve Skipper, I'm a Heracruz operator and trainer. Thank you. Good morning. I'm John Wolfenden, um, Heracruz training. So thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for having us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us. <clears throat> my, name is, <clears throat> my name is Cesar Rosales. I am yeah. training for uh, scheduling and dispatch. Thank you for having us. Good morning. My name is Oswaldo Rasanis. I'm a trainee for a paratransit operator, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Have a good day. Hello, I'm Nicole Zatina, and I'm doing scheduling and dispatching for paratransit. Good morning. My name is Brigida Medina, and I am a dispatch scheduler, and hopefully soon to be bus operator. Um, it's great chance. Great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good morning. My name is Christopher Robinson. I'm a bus operator. I appreciate all the effort and devotion that you guys have given. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Yvonne Pan. I'm a bus operator. I've been here in four weeks, and I'm excited to be here. Good morning, my name is Gustavo Guevara. I'm a trainee for the bus operator. Good morning, my name is Ruben Houdini. I'm a uh, trainee for the bus operator, and I'm just happy to be here. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rohit, and uh, I'm a bus operator trainee. So, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for having us here today. Hi, my name is uh, Joseph Timelo. I'm a uh, Training bus operator, thank you for this opportunity. I'm excited to begin this new era. Okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sergio Toledo. I'm a bus operator training, and we're part of the final class that we just got uh, our license. So we're looking forward to serving our community at uh, mm -hmm. uh, New Year's Cup. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Severiano Lara, and I'm a bus operator training. And I want to say thank you all the Metro personnel to give me the opportunity. So we're going to continue to move on. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jose Loma and I'm bus train. Thank you for the opportunity. Help to be. Okay. At least I didn't bring all of them, right? <laughs> Please do. Yeah. So I think it's important that they get to meet you. I think it's important that the community gets to meet them through Zoom or wherever they may be. Um, but there's a purpose for this. Today, staff is going to ask you for an increase of slots for both bus operators and their kinds of operators. Like we are permitting you right now, we can fill those slots. So I'm also asking you to please consider those numbers to up us because if we don't have the people, we can't serve the community. And that's all that we're really looking to do. And in that vein, I want to thank each and every one of you that helped us get through the RTC last week. All your support and your dedication shows that we really do have a board that has our back and that is felt throughout the entire organization. So I want to thank you for that. And the last piece is, I don't know if he's still here, but I want to thank Eduardo Montesino, who has stepped up beyond anyone's expectations to try to bring these people in. And the things that he's doing, let me tell you, I've seen him get kicked out of FedEx's loading bays <laughs> outside their entrance. So thank you, Eduardo, for everything that you're doing for us. Wait, hold on a sec. Before you go, um, I want to thank you and acknowledge you. Um, thank you for bringing um, the new members of the Metro family here. I think it is important for us to meet the folks who are doing the work every day. Um, you're what literally makes the Metro run. So thank you. Thank you. For all of my drivers, thank you. Yeah. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> All I have for you is a very additional document payment that support existing agenda. 
board was sent items 12 through 14 last night to review uh, supporting documents and then get uh, to the Thank you. Right, we are now on consent, um, which is uh, on items 8.1 through 8.13. Um, so we'll take these items all at once, and unless there's an item pulled. So let me just pause and see if there are any questions on any of the items, or if there are any items that uh, board members wish to pull. Just a comment, please. On item um, 810, which is the item of two, just marketing. I read the report, and I, I just wanted to get a little bit better sense of you know, when we'll expect their work to roll out. They get hired, they don't start on day one, do it spend a night, they want to have to learn who we are and what's going on. But what, what's the expectation for when we'll actually see the results of their marketing work? Well, I think mean, you can't know exactly. Um, it's nice to be on the yeah. Just watch out. Oh, all right. So, so you have one of them that's funded and one that's unfunded. And the one that's funded, uh, we're currently recruiting for. Uh, you have an intern, which is helping Danielle with it. And we have probably the best advertising firm in the nation for public transit self that's the oh, right. support. So, I think it'd probably take about a month to get the one assistant on board and then. Uh, I think you'll see the product pretty quick as far as those two working with Selfis and Bill Maxfield and his company on that. Uh, uh, in my CEO report, for example, today you'll see a product that Celtis has been working with Danielle and the intern on uh, in regard to phase two. As far as the financing is in January, we're going to see a budget that's going to give us some idea of what the cost is. What that really will show us is when, now that we feel that we run up against a cliff because there's been a lot of expenses, new bus drivers and other kinds of stuff. And so I understand that correctly in January because I didn't, we don't have the information in front of us now to understand the sort of total cost consequence. And but it's not, it's not, it's clear we can afford it, but at some point it becomes unaffordable without a sales tax to make it at least sustainable. Comments or questions on consent items? Okay, let me see. Uh -huh. I, I move approval. Let me, see, let me just oh, do that sure. oral uh, public comment. Sure. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on items um, 8.1 through 8.15, either in the room or online? I think we make Please. Please let us know which item they're coming to. Good morning. Um, Jim Rendler, I'm uh, making comment on 8.11. Um, outline adjustment and just um, I'm vice president for the future housing we're partners with Eden housing and uh, will be the, the developer of the Pacific station redevelopment I just want to express our excitement uh, we're honored to be part of the project it's uh, extremely exciting I um, not just to bring the formal housing but also with the rebuilding obviously of the metro station um, and I want to express gratitude to, to Michael and John and um, all the Metro team that it's been great to, to work with everyone. We're um, looking forward to getting this going in February. So thank you very much. Just happy to answer any questions if anybody has anything. Thank you. Can you restate your name? I'm Jim Rendler for the Future Housing. Great. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you guys. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, now I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. All right, we've got um, Director Pegler and Director Rotten second. And we don't need to do a roll call. We we'll just do, all right? Or do you want to do a roll call? Uh, no, I think you don't need to do a roll call. You don't have a okay. board members. Yeah. All, all right. right. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Consent passes. Um, moving on to our regular agenda, we have <clears throat> presentations of employee longevity awards um, for three, four, four of our um, employees. 
Um, I'll read their names and see if anyone's here, and then I'm going to pass it to um, Larry. So that's for 15 years of service to the Metro um, for Nathaniel Abrego, Andrea Uskill, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Robert Cross, and Ruben Valdez. Anyone here? Um, I'm going to pass it to Larry. You know one of these employees. I do, and I wanted to read something for Andrea Yusikil. Before we start, I'm going to record him, but just so you know, two of these operators for Veracruz, both Ruben and Nate, have now switched over and are part of the other pitch drop class and wasn't here today. Oh, okay. So that's why Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right after the I'll, I'll stand up to you. See, okay. I'm recording this because she wasn't able to be here. Um, I'm happy to share this appreciation of Andrea Yusigil on her 15th anniversary of working at Metro. Born and raised in Santa Cruz, Andrea joined the Metro in December 2008 as a payroll specialist processing payroll for our fixed route operators. In April 2014, she became an administrative assistant supporting the safety and training coordinator. And in October 2015, she became Metro's schedule analyst. That's when I met her. As Metro was conducting its first comprehensive operational assessment, or COA, with the goal of cutting costs through service reductions. I was director of transportation and parking at UCSC and was quite concerned about the impact of the 10% plus cut to routes serving the campus. While I obtained Chancellor Blumenthal's agreement to pay Metro about a half million dollars in additional funding to restore those cuts, <coughs> Andrea got busy planning how to best schedule the new service plan with the rest of the county's program. And just to make things more interesting, UCSC decided to modify its daily class schedule at the same time, so every class change and peak transit period shifted, so everything was changing at once. Andrea's knowledge of Metro systems and the use of the HASPA software led to a successful launch in fall of 2016. We then spent a lot of time monitoring the new ridership patterns with Andrea fine-tuning the service schedule and driver shifts with each new quarter. We've continued to monitor ridership patterns since that time, and today I look forward to implementation of the latest COA. I'll close by noting she's a big fan of the 49ers, but a bigger fan of her two girls, Natalia and Carolina. Andrea says, the quote, getting to watch them play basketball together at Santa Cruz High brings her the greatest joy in her life. So congratulations, Andrea, and thank you for your work. Let's give her a round of applause. Let's do another round of applause for all of them, ladies and gentlemen. We have two tickets for you all, so we'll get those to you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for doing that, Larry. Um, <clears throat> okay, item 10 is retire retiree resolution of appreciation for Maurizio Italia. No, that's it's not, it's not here. He's not here. Okay. Um, well, thank you for your um, service and work with the Metro. And congratulations on your retirement. All right, keeping our hands warm today. <laughs> it's a lot to celebrate. I love it. It's a good way to end the year. Um, we're moving on to item 11, Metro. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Just moving right along. <laughs> we do need a motion to. Okay, we got first by Director Rotkin, second by Director Newsom. And all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay, item 11 is Metro Advisory Committee semi annual oral report by Jessica DeWitt. Welcome, Ms. DeWitt. Thank you. I don't see a microphone, so I hope, that's it. I hope you can hear me. Um, good morning, board members. I'm Jessica DeWitt, the current MAC chair. Uh, the MAC committee very much appreciates the opportunity to provide you with this six-month MAC report today. Over the last six months, MAC has been very pleased to see continually increasing ridership levels as we move further and further from the pandemic period. MAC is excited to hear about the Youth Cruise Ridership Program and its significant jump in ridership levels, and hope to see more on this in the future. Uh, Metro staff, staff has been very responsive with listening to MAC, feedback on bus stop signage and shelters to discussions on the Reimagine Metro project. MAC is happy to hear that Metro continues to ramp up its presence in the community 
events like the Santa Cruz County Fair. Out and about, I hear many people actually saying, I really like the new look of the bus, the Metro buses out there. Um, it's, it's great to see how it celebrates the Santa Cruz County area and Metro and Monterey Bay area. Uh, finally, Mac greatly appreciates Mac staff taking the time to ride Mac with a tour of its operations facilities so we have a better understanding of how operations at Metro work. With all the innovative programs and projects and the works at Metro, Mac truly appreciates being a part of this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your work on the map. And that was just a, um, a report, but are there any questions or comments? <clears throat> okay. Great work. Great work. Okay. Item 12 is approve requests for reclassification results for operations deputy director and operations department. Hi. Hi, good morning. My name is Monique Delphine, and I'm the HR Deputy Director for Santa Cruz Metro, and I'm here on behalf of our HR Director, Dr. May, who is on a leave of absence today. I don't know if she's online, but um, she couldn't come today. Um, so for item 12, what we're asking the board is to approve the request for authorization of our new position for Operations Deputy Director in the Operations Department. Um, when in September 2023, our uh, operations manager for fixed route uh, submitted her retirement notice, um, our CEO, Michael Tree, appointed Daniel Zaragoza to supervise the work of two departments, for transit and fixed route, while we did a reclassific reclassification um, it, during that time, we um, contracted Coffin Associates. And this is the same vendor that we have been using in the last um, seven years now. Um, this new position will perform a variety of duties, um, but mostly managing both departments, fixed route and paratransit. Um, with this position, we are also updating the job descriptions of uh, the operations manager for fixed route in paratransit, and we are not uh, funding them, but we're just updating the job description for uh, future recruitment. And also updating the job descriptions of the assistants for both departments as well. And um, the adoption of this report will require around 80,000 for fiscal year 24 and 188,000 for fiscal year 25. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you. Questions about this? classification position. Okay, um, we'll go out to public comments. Okay. Here. Yeah, keep it brief. Uh, so I know there's been some question about unifying the two positions. I just wanted to put my full support behind Daniel Zaragoza and let you know that he already has been proving that he can do that job. So there shouldn't be any kind of worry or, you know, discussion more than can this be done? Can it not be done? Obviously, there's a fiscal cost for you to decide, but I'm just letting you know that working in operations daily, we have the staff in place to be able to pull that off. Thank you. All right, I'll bring it back to the board for <laughs> Okay, I think I saw um, Director uh, Koenig and then Director McPherson seconding. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yeah. Okay, exciting. Thank you. Um, so we have. I didn't go too far. We have um, approving requests for reclassification results for marketing and communications director in the marketing department. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So in March 2023, our um, our CEO Michael Tree requested a classification study for the uh, position of marketing, uh, customer service, and communications director to address the needs of. Um, a new department was created in this last fiscal year, July 1st of 2023. Uh, under the direction of our news, our CEO, Michael Tree, this position will now plan, organize, direct, and coordinate all marketing and communications programs, including public and media relations, and will also lead the agency-wide communications and branding for the first time in the organization. So, um, but 
the adoption of the recommendations of the study will require 19,000 K for fiscal year 24 and 40,000 K for fiscal year 25. Questions from directors. All right. Um, Let me just say, I, you know, from what we understood and hearing from Don and, and the budget and finance, it definitely sounds like something will pay for itself too, mm -hmm. very quickly. So yeah, thank you. And already we're wondering how, as Bell said, <coughs> doing all the work and marketing that she's doing, and, and every you know every event, everything. So to, it made total sense to change. Or to see even more work. So. Any public comment online? Can anyone here in person? All right, I'll bring it back to the board. Sure. Director Pankler, Director Rotkin. A second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thank you. And then item 14. Approve request for reclassification results for customer experience manager in a customer service department. Yes, and so what we're asking to the board, this is my last item, um, to approve the reclassification results for the customer experience manager. Um, also, uh, to address the needs of the customer service department, uh, the study determined the need for reclassification of the customer service manager to customer experience manager. Um, under the direction of our CEO, Michael Tree, this position will plan, organize, develop, and coordinate all activities of the customer service department. In addition, uh, we'll also coordinate this new program called the Ambassador Program here at Santa Cruz Metro to integrate Metro with the communities that we serve and to create a customer is first mindset. Um, to uh, adoption of these recommendations will, con will require 11,000 for fiscal year 24 and 29,000 for fiscal year 25. Okay. Questions on just have been please. Um, so the ambassador component is the newest, the new part of this, and is that driving the new, um, the new title? And, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. This is. Uh, I mean, this has been a, a job that's been on my mind a lot for recrafting. Instead of it just focusing on the customer service representatives. The job will now focus on more on the customer experience and what they're experiencing, and then shaping the customer service representatives to better, you know, serve the public. But I really envision this one, this job now as someone who uh, reports directly to the CEO and the executive team, and each morning comes in and has information on how the bus system's performing. How the, uh, how the riders are reacting to the bus system. If there's problems out there, this is the first person that just walks in the executive team in the morning and says, we got a problem, we need to solve it. So this one was really a customer facing position that brought in the pulse of what's going on in the system to the executive team every morning, including what we're saying the customer service representative. So it's got a lot more meat in this in, in the job description and the expectation is that this person is literally out where the people are enjoying the system cutting down problems getting their perspective from the customer's perspective and bringing that into the team to get things fixed and you know enhance so anyway this is like a key position as you move into uh the reimagined metro with the wave service and your your customer target really uh, evolves to choice riders who really are using you because they want to and they have other options. Uh, this is the person that really gets us fine tuned with what they're experiencing and what their needs are. Are you going to um, install any new measurements or reporting structures in that ambassador? Yeah, so the ambassador component, what we were really envisioning is when we um, moved to the temporary transit center, instead of having just a ton of security around, we envisioned working with the downtown association and having lots of ambassadors around. 
who are trained to be super friendly to approach uh, folks who might be lost. You, you'll see it in their eyes and the, in their mannerisms, right? And to help them find, you know, the bus that they're looking for, the connection that they're looking for. So that's a that will be under the obviously the job description of this customer uh, experience manager of the agencies to train the ambassadors to be present with the ambassadors and to facilitate. Yeah, it'll be great. Okay, um, if there's questions, Director Downey, uh, anyone else have questions or comments? Okay. We'll go to public, yeah, we'll go to public comment. Okay. Great morning. My name is Cece. I work for Alta at um, Student Life Community College in California. Great morning. I actually have a question as far as um, what you just mentioned or the information that you distributed. So for the ambassador project, can you give some more details as far as like um, how me, how I as a, um, or anybody in the community is gonna be, have the awareness that I can reach out to this ambassador? How do I, and another thing, the training that you mentioned, is that gonna be, are they gonna be trained to be competent to um, address uh, not only specific relating to the metro system, but I mean, if you're working with people here that are, we all have our unique um, styles of communicating. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. So typically we don't do a question back and forth, but those are great questions. So let me see if there's anyone else who wishes to make oral communication okay. and then we'll respond to those questions. Um, anyone else? Okay. Um, and I would like to know the responses to that too. So if um, you were Michael. Michael, do you? Yeah, and so, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I think that we'll try and hire this position extremely quickly. Um, and uh, we've already set up a relationship with the Downtown Association to facilitate bringing on board ambassadors. So, you know, my expectation would be that this customer experience manager and the team really work closely with the ambassadors to show them how the routes work, to show them how the, the tables, the timetables work, to polish customer service skills. They'll be out and about at that temporary transit center with, uh, with a specific style of clothing. So you'll be able to see them very quickly and notice that there's several around. Um, I mean, I hope that helps, but that's really the vision is to make sure that these folks are just super accommodating. They're, they're, they're looking for people to help and they're not just waiting for someone to approach them, but actually engaged with the folks that are, uh, you know, using the system. Thank you. Does the downtown association still have a host program that is generally downtown working? And yes. how, how will that be integrated with this program? Is, is it the same, out of the same pool that the people are I mean, for this, are the ambassadors different than the hosts? Or? You know, I think there'll be some synergy there. Um, I can't remember her name at the Downtown Association. Jorian. Jorian, yeah. She, you know, her comment was instead of going out and just hiring a bunch of temps, why don't you work through our program, the host program, and then we'll, we'll get the right people that can be the right ambassadors for you at the temporary transit center, and then you train them then. But she was really facilitating finding the right folks through through her program. Right, because at our, at our center, there are people not only looking for the bus route, but they're also like, well, there's the you know bookstore or whatever. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's right. And and the other part you mentioned that instead of having a lot of security, you're not talking about them doing security, providing training and security as far as protection or that type of thing, but more of an information. There'll still be security, but you won't having them double having to be host or ambassadors. Security will be dealing with security. Yeah, that was the intention of my comment is that, uh, I mean, Chuck's budgeted for, Chuck is at three times the security over what we have now when we implement phase two. I wanted the security to have a presence, but not necessarily uh, be the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. I wanted a whole new group to. Two separate yeah. presence. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll look for a motion. 
The subject for doubting first. One second. second. Oh, Director Watkins, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Okay, great. That's really exciting. Looking forward to seeing that. We're moving on to the CEO report. All right. Well, hey, I hope everyone's having happy holidays and uh, really enjoying time. You know, it's a special time of year. It's our last board meeting of the year. Uh, and I think there's great things going on and very minimal challenges right now. I mean, you got lots of new operators coming in. You'll, you're ahead of the curve on getting ready for phase two uh, in the summer and the fall. And uh, so I, I had just a couple of bullet points to hit lightly and then uh, thought it would be nice to hear from Danielle and kind of the marketing that's all going for phase one and phase two changes that are coming up. Just kind of give you an idea of the quality of work that she's doing with Celtis and, and Bill Maxfield. And then also I, uh, I thought as a kind of a culmination at the end of the year to have Chuck maybe just take two minutes or three minutes to talk to you about really what's happened financially with the agency uh, from a grant, a competitive, uh, you know, discretionary grant environment. And uh, so I'm pretty excited. The overall big picture is uh, at RTC when the commission approved the $32.4 million that allowed you to uh, uh, fund and get into the three-year pilot project. Uh, which has phase two and have that in a fair free environment. And what's really super exciting about that is uh, the routes are going to be really simple and easy to understand. They're going to be fast and frequent. Um, the TSP project will get underway and the buses will have priority in intersections. And I really think at the end of 2026, when the pilot's uh, coming uh, to a completion and hopefully there's permanence in it moving forward from that point, I really think you'll be in the 8 million ride range, which is a range that you've never been in before uh, on a long shot. Um, so I'm excited about the future, and it has been a heck of a, a fun year. Um, I did want to mention that the CHP came to town and uh, did a random uh, kind of impromptu inspection. They basically show up and hand you a list of buses that they want you to pull off the road up on the lift and they literally go through that bus all the records pertaining to the bus on the maintenance that's been done and they go through all the driver records to make sure that every one of the permits and every one of the licenses have been up to date throughout the the inspection period so they go backwards to make sure no one had a lapse and they gave us they gave uh, metro the highest rating possible for the CHP inspection for being able to have buses that were maintained appropriately and drivers uh, that are trained appropriately and uh, licensed appropriately. So we'll do a news release. I think the public, we owe it to the public to tell them how we fare with uh, the CHP. They're the agency that comes in and really every year randomly takes a look at whatever they want to look at and issues a rating. Um, so I'm excited about that. We just recently completed construction on one of our bus bays in the maintenance facility. And so uh, it's a, a bus bay that was custom made for Arctic buses, your 60 foot buses. And so that's exciting because that allows us to further uh, maintain the larger buses. And you'll notice Eddie's not here today and he's down in San Diego with the team getting four more of the articulated buses. So at that at that point, uh, during the weekend when they start arriving with those four Arctic buses, you'll have 10 articulated buses from San Diego that they've uh, provided to you to implement phase two and to really, you know, get the quality service for the students. And so that's really been a big theme here is uh, let's give the best possible service we can to the university students and the Purdue College students. So that's going along really well. Um, I want to highlight uh, Margo, and uh, you 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 took uh, Daniel Zaragoza, who has been here like twenty years and who is just super popular with everyone at the agency for being competent and also having a personality that just allows you to feel comfortable around him. So you elevated him to a deputy level. That allows him really to just take the reins like he's doing, and it allows Margo then to do some other things that uh, we don't have the capacity to do. So she's plugging holes and filling holes, 
And I want to give you an example of how she's doing that. Um, so we had a price quote for those 44 hydrogen buses. These aren't the, the 60 foot hydrogen buses, these are the 44 there's and you had approved a contract and we really felt like we wanted to negotiate further the price of the buses off the price that you approved because we had a pretty good volume. And uh, man, I've been trained at Harvard in, in negotiations and I tried for like two weeks to get that price down on these damn buses. <laughs> They're $1.47 million. It's just an astronomical cost. And to buy 44 of them, not including buying the RTX, I really felt like we would do a discount. And so I was coming up empty and Margo took a shot at it. And I don't know what the heck she did, <laughs> but she came back like three days later with a $28,000 discount on every, on every bus, which equates to about a $1.3 million cost savings to the agency. So... It's great, right? I mean, man, uh, I didn't know Margo was that good. Yeah, we <laughs> but I have a feeling she roughed him up behind me. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to update you that that contract that you awarded to New Flyer is moving forward. We're getting discounts. We're, we're playing good hardball with the firm to give us the best uh, pricing that they can do. And then CTE is now on board. They did your uh, your uh, zero emission bus master plan. They're the project manager getting uh, Messer and all of the others involved on getting your fueling station going and, and having it ready to go when your hydrogen buses come in. So that's working out really well. Um, you saw your new operators. I couldn't, there's no way I could tell you how Great a job Eduardo has done. That on top of being the dang mayor and doing all those mayor responsibilities and still doing other things at Metro, the guy's everywhere. And he's even got drivers involved with uh, with the recruitments. And man, I can just tell you, uh, I don't know of any other agency in the nation that is bringing in that level of great drivers and that volume in such a short time. And Eduardo's mantra, and so, and so it is with Margo and Daniel, is we don't give a damn about driving skills. We can teach you how to drive. We just want a clean driving record to know you're not reckless. But we can teach you how to drive, but we can't teach you how to have great customer skills. And I think you saw today, these guys are just humble, great people that want to serve. And uh, so my hat's off to Eduardo. Um, it's been a fun year. Uh, I, with the uh, approval of the 32.4 million at the RTC, that allowed you to get into phase two. It allowed you to fund Metro through 2026. And so the chair, uh, Chevra, has asked for an uh, ad hoc committee to reconvene in regard to future funding opportunities and potential ballot measures. So before your next board meeting, they will have met at least one time and we'll have some recommendations, I think, coming to the board that you can talk about and consider in that regard. Um, but uh, why don't we just close out, Danielle, you want to uh, take on a dog and pony yeah. show about what uh, we're up to with marketing? Yeah, that sounds good. Everybody should have this happiness on their desk that goes through the phase one we imagine marketing plan. Um, just to show you that we're really getting the word out to the community, I know um, that was a main concern of yours and, of course, ours, so I want you to know we're doing our part. Um, so the first two pages goes over our organic social media feed, which we've done in both English and Spanish. And it highlights, you know, obviously a couple of highlights that, you know, there's more service, the increase in frequency to give me a call in 15 minutes return of 90X and the Route 3. And then we're continuing to develop more of these banners as uh, we get closer to launch. So you'll see new ones out there as well. Um, and then I will also email this to you guys in case you want to put any of this on your social media feed. Um, those are embedded here. And then we go on to paid digital creative. So those are on, I think, page three and four. Um, so covering a lot of the same things, but slightly different graphics there. Um, then we also did a Spotify ad and a few Spanish radio ads for those who are not on social media. And then, of course, we did print ads from the Santa Cruz Sentinel. So you'll see those examples there. 
And then the press banner, Pacaronian, and good signs. And then as far as collateral, we did a fact sheet in English and Spanish, um, a brochure in English and Spanish. Um, on the back side, it has the map. And then, of course, the brochure. These are on board all of our vehicles now, in addition to car parts. They're at the transit centers, along with posters. Um, Eduardo has been passing them out throughout the entire community. So they're at libraries, community centers. Um, and then headways, of course. So we have English and Spanish versions of headways here. Um, and then inside headways is a nice cheat sheet. So if you used to take a specific route and it doesn't exist anymore, it tells you which route replaced that. Um, and then, of course, web banners for Metro's web page. And then we have bus apps that are being installed uh, starting last night. So those will be out in the community on our buses, too, for King, Queen, and Sail app. Um, and then the last page is just our car parts, which are also in English and Spanish. Um, so we've really used all mediums to try to get out into the public. Um, I don't, you know, I'm open to other suggestions, but I'm really hoping we cover all of our basis. Um, and so I'm open to any questions. Yeah. Well, I just comments because um, I was supposed to give her some information on, on the actual also things that we that internally we're doing for with our customers. Um, so we're, um, since we got in the headways, we probably, you know, already, already given out like 5,000 headways to the community. Um, internally, our customers, and alternately, we've gone to senior centers, we've gone to uh, farmer's market, we've gone to, you know, um, we've gone to uh, all the libraries in the county. So uh, there's, there's packets about everywhere in the information. So there's a touch point. And, you know, uh, basically that people can touch on, you know, um, that, uh, that they can get their information. And we're still not done. We're still continuing that, that effort be, um, because I know there's a lot of fear in a lot of people. Uh, uh, change is, is, is difficult. So all those efforts are in their way. And, and they're all being done by the, the, the drivers, you know. Uh, I just organize it, but the drivers are the ones that are that are that are actually uh, going out to the community, talking to people, you know, getting that information, and because they're, uh, they're the knowledgeable pe uh, people, and just touching space with it. <laughs> Thank you. Quite incredible how much has been produced in the last year. So thank you for your work. And, you know, it's I follow the Metro on my social media, and it's super easy to just click share. Every time I see something, I'll just, you know, a couple times a week, I'll click share and it gets likes and then other people share and goes <laughs> around. Yeah. Uh, just a quick comment. Eduardo pointed this out. That this I saw yesterday and it was what I was looking for, where I, it's what's changed. I used to ride the uh, 68. What is it now? And I think this is going to be wonderfully helpful because this is long, a lot of detail that you need, but to just look and go, well, there's my route. Oh. It's the three or the one or the two. I can look at that. Really help. Great. Other um, questions? How is this being disseminated to PCSC and Rio students? I know the term is ending, but they're going to come back after this has been out. Yeah, I know Megan and her team has sent the information out that I have sent through press releases to those the students out there. And her and I have been meeting, um, I think, monthly or bi monthly now to work on getting more information out to students. So we're ramping up to try to out do more outreach with them. It's a question to Dan. I, I know you were thinking about having student ambassadors around campus who could help explain. Is that in place for maybe winter quarter? Yeah, so we've been toying with the idea of just getting students out to transit stops uh, for a number of reasons, but also to kind of just talk about what services that we have to offer, what Metro has to offer, how we can get that part of their dropping points. Um, there's going to be a learning curve, uh, especially since the marketing is ramping up now. And last week and finals week, and it kind of obviously the students are focused on being students. So, um, you know, continue to try to get the word out uh, about, you know, especially about the 10 and the 15, no longer uh, being the 10 and the 15, but rather something else. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be ongoing and there will be a little bit of a learning curve, but we'll also learn a lot of lessons so that when phase two comes rolling around, we'll know a little bit more how to get that word out. 
get their attention. So that will also be the learning curve of the shift of people from Pacific Station of the street to the temporary transit center downtown. There's a, there's a lot of learning to do. Yeah. So I have one more. Um, regarding your, your offer of social media information for the board, would it be possible to just send us all that information? Because we tend to do better when you send it versus request. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to send you this and then all of the links for all of it are embedded. So that'll be good. Um, and then regarding Pacific Station, we did include the temporary site map for Riverfront in the sort of. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I know that at UCSC it's difficult to get the campus to send messages to faculty. But faculty definitely are unhappy when students don't get the class because they don't know what bus to be on or whatever. So I, I would put some pressure on the administration to get an announcement out to faculty that they can meet in their class. You know, really short little thing. But that's, you can reach every student by having faculty members get those things. They have the self-interest in reading that out to their class. I mean, it won't happen easily because they, they you know, faculty are busy and so forth, but faculty really need to have that uh, information so they can tell their students how to get to class on time. How did you read that to your class? Good <laughs> 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 suggestion. Other comments or questions? Okay. Well, what Rose mentioned, it, and one thing I think Mom was talking about the news on the bus crash at UCSC is just how we can make sure. And there's been a couple of comments that it was a UCSC bus, but you know, just if there's any way people don't still have concern that it's a metro safety issue. So I don't know what we can do on that, but has that come up? Yeah, I, I did reach out to KSBW and they have stopped using the metro B roll footage and they did apologize for using it. Okay, very good. So before uh, I end my CEO report, we did have Chuck with uh, just some comments uh, that he wanted to share. So Chuck, feel free to come up front and share some comments. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I think this is actually good for celebration. So I'm going to talk about really some really, really good stuff. So I'm going to run through basically all the awards that we received in money and grants. And basically, since Michael came aboard, which is what, 18, 24 months-ish, and these are, I'm only going to go through those that are one time. So, you know, there's stuff that we get reoccurring every year, but this is really one time. So, these are grants associated with buying buses. So, this is a piece. Not only have we received the VW grant piece, we went after that, and that's about $24, 25000000 million. But we got the Tursa piece, another $13 million. We got the mega grant ASIC, and that's about another eight million. And then we got the Lono grant, and that was another eighteen point two million. It's sixty-four million dollars that we got to buy buses to go, and that's just the bus side of the house. You add in the HVIT, the rebates we get, that number goes all the way up to seventy-six point seven million dollars. Now, as part of even these grants that we're, we're getting, we went after stuff that was on bus, but bus related. So with the Tursa, we got the we got the hydrogen filling station for 8.6. We got money for the Watsonville housing and bike hub. That's another 8.5. We got the bus rapid enhancements of 5.1, maintenance facility upgrade of another 1.5, and about another 2 million for like workforce development project management. You know, all in all. That right there, that's another $25 million. And that came from the Tursa grant that we won. And then, thank you, thankful for the RTC last week, we got another um, $32.4 million that helps us for phase one and phase two. Uh, as part of the Lono grant, we had another 2.1 for hydrogen station and workforce development. We also got the REAP 2.0, which is uh, $2 million for the Watsonville Transit Center. We also were able to score $9 million for the bus tarmac. Even though the money won't come directly to us, this is to help build lots of the, or the uh, PAC station and a few others. That in total added up to $71.8 million. So all in all, just to kind of give you a concept, this is $48.5 million over the last 18 to 24 months of one-time monies for buying buses and infrastructure. This is two years, two years worth of money that we spend operationally just to run this agency that we received. 
I mean, this is, you know, as we kind of go around you know, with our eyeballs wide open saying this stuff, this is, you know, on the blank ton of money that we are receiving. <laughs> How much was it? Read, read it again. I think you read it wrong. 148. You just said 48. Oh, I'm sorry. 148.5 million dollars. <laughs> So, um, like I said, that's two years worth of operating just this agency alone worth of money that we've been able to pull in. So, I think we've unbelievable. It's good way to go. Can you send us that? I was trying to. Yeah. Uh, so, nobody would do math. Yeah, I just. Well, we caught the 100 million. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to Chuck take that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> yes, you will. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so 150 million, this does not include that we've actually applied for more grants and we're just waiting on stuff to come back. And if we end up receiving those grants, this number is going. Thank you. So, does this, when you get a grant and you're applying for more, does that? Help that we got, what we have, or what do you think in the big picture? Do they say, "Hey, you've got a lot. You don't don't you know, do what you do with what you have," or do they say, "Hey, you're on the move, and we want to do more"? I mean, is there a general? I mean, here's my take on it: is the fact that you know, and this is like talking with Juan and and everybody else. Once you receive it, if you really show performance and you're actually doing something, they're willing to give you more money and more money. It's when you take get a grant, you just sit. Mm -hmm. You know, then they're like, "Well." You're not spending the money, then why do we want to give you any more money? Right. And that's it. We're moving, we're making changes. You see it we're moving forward with the hydrogen buses, we're moving forward with buses in, in general. We're already starting to do, do the infrastructure. We got pack station, you know, it's it's basically almost shovel ready here in, in February. That's gonna go. So we're actually doing stuff. That helps a lot. And hence, we have some cookies and <laughs> just some fun food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, thank you, Chad. Do you have a question? Yeah, um, I don't know if people remember, when we announced that we were going to buy 57 hydrogen, there, there were some people in the community representing the industry. And the media, everybody else, right? Well, it's not really green. Because you know, when you make the hydrogen, you put electricity in the water, it's supposed to be the hydrogen and oxygen. If that electricity is coming from you know the fossil fuel, then really it's not really green, it's kind of fake green. But then thankfully, a week later, the Biden administration announces they're gonna put hydrogen like uh, uh, stations to create not just the fuel of us, but to create the hydrogen that gets. To, to where we're going to be doing it. And I wonder if you can tell us any more about what progress, where's that, where's that going to be? Is it close to us? Can, is it within, you know, a fuel truck driving from, from our station? Do, do we know any of that stuff yet? Is that still up in the air? I think mostly it's up in the air. Uh, the award was $1.2 billion. To yeah, that's an impressive number. And then the state had actually matched that. And so that had, a, there was a lot of money there. And I think, I think there was a concept of designing a green hydrogen production facility, but there was also the concept of taking multiple hydrogen green green hydrogen facilities and bringing them in under one umbrella. So there were there were multiple uh, ways of approaching it that they were fine tuning with the federal government. So I'm anticipating that the CEO will come out in early 2024 and say, this is exactly how the feds and arches are gonna move forward together. Is that, that's what, I mean, that really. Yeah, their goal was to go from five, go from where the market is now to $5 a, a kilogram of, and then uh, to even take it to two and to one if they could in the in the long term. So, you know, I remember the pepper button. It's not really the Biden administration announced that. <laughs> and the beauty is, I think you're doing your part here locally because the local impact is those buses have no tailpipe. Okay. 
Um, well, I just want to make a couple comments before we adjourn. Um, I had the opportunity recently to put it all in one breath, everything that's happened over the last year at the Metro, and it's pretty incredible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that here. Youth cruise free, one ride at a time, reimagine wet Metro and now the wave services, which has created how many jobs? I don't know. 33 so far. 33 bus driving jobs, 64 jobs. Um, you know, the, the setting the stage for 128 units of affordable housing in a new transit center, 148.5 million, I know over the last 18 months, 57 hydrogen buses, the, the largest purchase in, in North America. I mean, this is, this is incredible. And this is all so we can improve our transit system, so we can contribute to community well-being. And every single person in this room and so many others who aren't in this room um, had a hand in that. So I just want to acknowledge everyone's accomplishment. I want to thank our leadership. Um, I want to thank you, Michael, for everything you've done. Um, I'm looking forward to next year and what we can accomplish in next year and, and see the fruits of this labor in our community and um, just super, super excited. So with that, I want to wish you all happy holidays. You know, I think that you know, a few are invited to the end of the not bad, just to just those that are not bad. That is a great yeah, idea. I'd love to work on that. And, and so it's simply it's confusing. <laughs> Enormous, uh, but you know, just to just say, hey, this is what we've done, and this is what it's going to mean. From board members, yeah. yeah I think it's a two. It was interesting. Okay, all right. Well, a lot of us, so maybe we'll work with you. Um, I'll, I'll send it. Thank you for that suggestion. We'll send a, a follow up email and get a, a, a group of us, and maybe the whole board, um, to put together an op-ed. I don't know if that might less, less than a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll get less than a quorum. Members, and we'll get a quick so with that, happy holidays. Thank you. Uh, oh, we, we, have do, we do have someone online. Uh, Matt Farrell. Oh. Okay. Um, well, let me wish you all a happy holidays, and um, I hope you have the opportunity to celebrate in whatever ways you celebrate with your friends and family. And um, we'll take this comment from Matt Farrell, and then we'll see each other on January 26. Matt, are you there? Up there. Eric, can you hear me if you can give Matt uh, the ability to speak? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say, as uh, representing Friends of the Round Trail, of course, and I just want to say that we appreciate the um, leadership that's been shown in the last two years, both at the um, Transit District and Regional Transportation Commission to address, you know, the regional transportation needs of the county, especially starting to focus on its transit needs. There's been a history of um, distance between those two agencies, and I think it's been a disservice to our community. Lastly, I just want to say that Ford appreciates the um, open door that Michael Tree has had for talking about the challenges that face us and focusing on opportunities to collaborate. We appreciate um, the district support for um, allocating some funding in the coming year for rail the rail concept study and we look forward to working together to um build an equitable and comprehensive solution to our transit needs thank you thank you mr farrell thank you for your service support okay with that we will adjourn happy holidays everyone thank you, thank you.